and welcome back to another Bob Blast High Hump Bob Burridge. And this is the third installment of me painting the uh, on this canvas burgundy and blue. So my paints are already freshly squeezed out, fresh water. I'm getting myself ready to go. Alrighty, and so to, to come back to the painting, this is when I this is the moment I've been waiting for. I start building up layers of paint. And so the first thing I need to do is redetermine where my light is coming from. Hello from the window. So that way I know where to put my lights and my darks. Let's get started. But first, I need to put this hand barrier cream on my hands. I got a lot of stuff all over me. This is Scott, it's called Skin Safer. Marvelous Mary Ann, great stuff. Put some stuff on my hands, rub it all over. The real reason I do it is because it's a lot easier for me to clean my hands at the end of the day. It's almost like putting on some kind of invisible gloves. There's all kinds of hand barrier creams out there, but this is the stuff I like to use. Okay, we're gonna start off with the lights and the darks. I'm gonna use a flat brush so I can start off with the checkerboards here. I'm gonna put in my light colors first, see if I can do it quickly. And this is, as I said, this is the moment I've been waiting for because now I start to build up layers of paint and less water. Oh, here we go. And again, I, this is how I do the checkerboards. It's not a mechanical drawing. So I'm not looking for precision here. God knows, not even the painting. There we go. Two more. This is how I do my checkerboards anyway. It's starting to drip. Oh boy, I love it. It's called painting. Yay. One more over here, maybe one more over here. Now this is where the shadow's coming from. So I don't want to put a light one back here, it's gonna be a shadow. So I want to make it up over here too. We're just assuming it's, <laughs> that's the per perfect perspective. Again, I'm, you don't want to do every square. It just shows the illusion of this part. Now we're gonna go back in here. I think it was kind of almost on the bluish side. Mix up some more white. There we go. Into that color. And now it's kind of like, greenish. Whoa. So this will be the part that's in the shadow. Somewhere in that area. While I have that paint on my brush, I'm going to put it somewhere else too. It helps to hold the whole thing together. And I like to point out, you should be painting everywhere. Have the paint everywhere. I'm going to make the bottle even taller, give it more character. You know, notice where my, my brush is everywhere around here. It's gonna start looking more painterly now. All right, I'm gonna take a mini break here and let this dry and come back right at you in a couple of minutes. So I had that yellow on my brush. How did I get the dark green in the painting? Well, I just reached over here and picked up some blue since everything's gonna be bluish in the shadow, mixed it all up. I got that beautiful kind of a Kelly green color, a darker version of the yellow, so to speak. But what I was going for, remember on the original painting, I was going for this checkerboard effect. So I'm still going to be doing that, continuing it on, but I wanna work somewhere else just so you can see me doing something else. I'm gonna work right now in the wine bottle. Let's paint a wine bottle in the middle of all of this too. So I had that yellow right there. Start painting the wine bottle. There's that part. I'm gonna, the wine is actually pretty dark. There we go, right down there. There we go, there's it. And inside the wine bottle, believe it or not, it's going to get really bright, bouncing up inside this side. There you go. There you go. Starting to drip, too. I haven't taught my paint to do this yet. When it starts to drip. So I just dot it here a little bit here. And here we go. Some more over here. Now I'm just painting all over the place. Even though I'm doing the wine bottle, I'm still going to put some of this color somewhere else. This is what, this is what gives it that. Wonderful painting quality that I like so much. Put some open here too. I'm going to start to indicate the windows. I like the little small window panes. Just to give me an idea where it's all gonna go. Right there. See how I clean my brush off on the painting somewhere else? Again, it starts to hold the whole thing together. I'm not gonna start working with highlights too much at this point, but I wanna remind myself that's gonna be here comes some dark purple in here ah, with the white on it. There you go. See, we're making it painterly already. I like, oh, I want to anchor it, put a dark color down there. Here's the 
wine glass. I'm putting a shadow in the bottom of the wine glass already. Negative space inside the chairs. So I'm doing some negative space painting here. That's cool. Even the chair has starting to have character. Painting it everywhere. Not ever trying to finish it in one sitting. Blip. Hey, that was fun, wasn't it? Well, my camera just decided to go on vacation. But hey, we're back again. Now I'm gonna go right back into the darks. Really get that dark area down. By painting in the darks, that tells me where my lights are going to be. Let's grab one of them. Let some of the other color peek through. So I'm putting down, right now, uh, kind of like a violet color. Do some negative shade paint inside the glass. There you go, it's starting to come and develop a little bit here. Same here. Oh, get myself back over here again. I'm gonna make the bottle even longer now. I always like to say anybody who doesn't change their mind doesn't have one. So here we go. Make it more. Yeah, I just like the proportion better now. And I'm going to make sure that the chair's there. here. Yeah. Don't really interrupt that area just yet. So this is the back of the chair. I'm still drawing it. <laughs> so this is the dark side of the back of the chair. There you go. Starting to show some sunlight here. Look at this glass come to Yes, I like the personality better. I'm gonna come back in with continuing with more darks. Now the darks come across here. Ah, oh, there we go. Also at this time, making the chair thinner. There you go. There you go. So I know the lights come across here, around here. Oh, I love those drips. It makes it a painting. <laughs> At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> also, don't stay in one area too long. So I'm gonna come back over here. And, and maybe, oh, I don't know if I like that angle. That's a better angle. Here we go. I'll do some serious painting in there later on. Don't try and solve all the problems all at the same time. So this side, inside is gonna be dark. Inside the wine, glass of wine will be dark. I'm kind of excited at this point, so I can't wait to start putting in some light colors. There you go, boy, that'll brighten it up. <laughs> That's that hot pink opera. And again, I'll just keep putting it everywhere else, too. Wow. That makes absolute no sense, and that's why I like it. <laughs> All right. Looks like there's some people outside there. So I'm gonna start developing that area a little bit. So this is gonna be bright sunset. See, it's my negative shape painting here. Look, look, there's some people out there in the window. There's the heads. There we go. Oh, there's people out there. Making outside brighter. There we go. Not to draw too much attention to itself, but there you go. And here, there we go. I'm gonna continue on. Just to break it up a little bit more, I'm gonna continue on the uh, Checkerboards pattern. Totally turning wacky at this point. That's how I like it. Again, working all over. I'm always redrawing the shape of the wine bottle. I mean, the glass of wine. They're so elegant. I'm just trying to bring that elegance in there. Later on the stems down here is going to be the bottom of the, look at that. Well, I like how that turned out. The stems coming down here. 
Let's try that again. thinner way thinner let some of the other underpainting colors come through too making this a whole lot thinner well I'm going to continue on this but I think you get the general idea I know my lights coming across here so it's gonna be nice and bright back here I'll just put some indication on that right now so there's the back we go the back of the tablecloth. That wonderful perspective, it's so far off. I love it. And after a while, it starts to come together. I'll continue painting on this for maybe another hour or so. And I think I'm going to have one more shot at this at the next Bob Blast. Thanks again for watching. I'm really enjoying how this is developing. I hope you're enjoying this too. And I'm gonna try it one more time. See you on the next Bob Blast and make sure you share this with your friends. Take care. Oh, hi. Here I am relaxing, thinking about next year, April in Paris. Can you imagine April in Paris? Looks like April 13th, 2024. What could be better than that? Well, how about on a deluxe river cruise boat, just for us? So it's mostly sketching and painting all throughout Paris, Givernay, and all the way up to Normandy on our own boat. What I like about it is several things. First of all, we're not gonna be schlepping around and lugging around those big easels and paint boxes. We're gonna be sketching, light sketching on location, and then working and painting back on the boat. Fantastic, they take care of us. Speaking of taking care of us, the Dillmans. They put these, these programs together for me every year. They're spectacular people. The Dillmans.com, check it out. You'll see the daily 10 day uh, itinerary on this river boat cruise throughout France. Something I'm looking forward to. I cannot wait. It's something I've always wanted to do. Jean Rene, hello. And so April 13th, 24th, and 2018, make sure you sign up now because people are signing up. Check out Dilmas.com. Thanks for checking this out.